Hi, I'm Roxanne Carter and this is block 11 of our 2019 Technique Sampler. This one is our triple Dresden plate and it is just a really fun one to do. There are three layers of different fabrics here and uh, in the, I have this one here and then on this one here is the one on the sampler. So the first thing we do in our pattern here is to take the four eight and a half inch background squares and sew them together, sew them sideways and put the two seams together just as the picture shows at the bottom. But the reason for this is so that we have our points where our seams here where we can line up our seams of our Dresden blades. Okay, on this particular pattern, we have to make our template, and the template is from the template plastic that I've required, and it is this shape right here. So this is our piece right here, just like we did in block eight or 10, you make your template plastics. And this one here, I didn't take the pattern to it, but I did draw the lines. I placed it on the template. I used a ruler and a permanent marking pen, and I marked my lines. Those lines are important to keep the blade straight. So once we get this cut, oh, on there, also make the little background piece also on there because that's our center, so you might as well make that at the same time. So we place our blades right down onto our <clears throat> pieces of fabric here, and you can cut two at a time, so I've got them wrong side together. And we can lay the template plastic so that the top edge matches and our bottom edge matches. And then we can use our cutter and we can use the template plastic as a guide. Or you can take and lay a ruler on top of the uh, plastic and cut right next to the ruler. So there are our two blades. And I'm going to cut two more by just placing this right here and then cut two more. So that will give us four that we need. You need to cut eight of each of these and you also will cut eight each from your accent two. This is accent one, this is accent two. And I've already done that to save some time. And so then what we're going to do is we're gonna take these blades Get those out of the way and we're going to fold them in half and so you're going to fold them in half like that and if you do just a little bit of a finger press about oh half an hour halfway quarter way down the uh, template just a little bit of room there to give us a little bit of a crease when we fold these back it'll help be helpful so now we're going to sew these And we're just gonna do our quarter inch seam. I'm gonna start right there at the corner and I'm going to do a little back stitch. And take another one and do the same thing with it. Doesn't matter which end you put in first, but it is nice to do just a little bit of a back stitch right there so that it doesn't come out. If you don't want to do the back stitch, then you can shorten your stitch length. So we'll cut these apart. And I like to take and do a little kind of tiny snippet right there just to kind of trim off that little point there. And then you take your thumb or your thumb inside, your finger onto the side, and just hold that over. And then that right there will line up to that little crease that I made right there. So you can't hardly see it, but there was a crease there. So if I fold this back again, I'll show you. I just crease this down a ways, fold this over, flip it up, and fold down. And you can just line that seam up right to that crease. If you want to, you can use the purple thing, which is a tool. It's called a purple thing. You can get that right into there and kind of help get that point nice and straight. So then we iron those down. Okay, when you're cutting out your accent six pieces, you want to line up that top, that first line there, the second line, I guess, from the bottom, and you're going to cut both sides on that one, and you're going to cut the whole strip. This one is the full length strip because you need 16 of these. And so then we're going to take and do the same thing with our accents three and four 
And so we would line this line and the bottom so that we keep these straight and cut both sides. Each of these only need eight each, so there's a half a strip. Now we're gonna sew these into pairs. And so you just wanna make sure that you have lined them up. So on these, I've got my background on top of, I mean the accent um, two on top of the accent one, going into the sewing machine. And again, I'm gonna backstitch a little bit right there and come down and just make sure they both meet. And then we're going to press these in one direction. So now I'm going to add another pair to the side there so that I get one quarter of it done. And then we're going to make a half. these and you'll see how it comes together okay so I've got a half of each ring done I want to show you this before normally I would sew the entire ring done that's how I'm going to have you do it in the pattern but first of all we sew the pairs together then we sew the pairs themselves together and then you just keep doing it until you get the full rings of each color done I only wanted to do half to show you the reason for the seams here is so that we can line these seams of the, the blades up into there and notice they're about a half an inch from each of the edges this one would be around like this here so when it gets all sewn together and you want to make sure that ring fits onto your thing if you have some trouble and it looks like it's a little too full in the middle or something you can take any one of these seams in a little bit to make them fit the next round is our accent six it's going to line up here so these seams should line up and they're all gonna line up like that. And then the last round where we sewed the accents three and four together, they are in the reverse order. You want the light going to the dark and the dark going to the light. So that is how I did it. You can do it any way you want, but this is how I did it. I wanted the lights going to the dark and the darks going to the light. So that is how. So you just lay these on here. I would pin them down. So I would pin each one of these down. That down when I get the full ring on, of course. But I would pin each one of these down all the way around, and then I would make my center. So you can even stick one pin through all of them and that'll hold it as well. I don't need that one because that's holding it down. So pin here, and we'll pin one out here. Hold that and then one into here and hold this so that's going to kind of hold my blades down as I sew it around to make my center what I did in the pattern I only had you cut one three and a half inch square if you want to do it the method that I did it you will need two three and a half inch squares so I would take my two three and a half inch background squares or main print squares put them right side together take my template, place it on there, trace around it. Then I would sew on the line, cut away to a little less than a quarter of an inch all the way around, and then you turn it. You slit the back piece. So you slit one piece, one side, you slit it, and then you take and put your, um, turn it in your fabric wrong side, the right side out. If you take the little flat end of the purple thing and you can kind of just end up getting that nice clean edge around the edge there then you press it 
and then that's going to lay on top like that. If you want, you can take and just trace this onto fusible web, cut it out with the one layer, and then fuse it down. That's the other option that I have in the pattern. You can either hand applique this down on each of the blades. On the block here, I top stitched with an invisible thread all the way around each one of the blades. But on the sampler quilt that I did, kind of pull it up here. You can see that I did some quilting here to hold this one down. I did a half an inch in on this one and a half an inch in on this one so that these are all kind of loose. So that is another way of putting them down. So I hope you have fun with the block. Remember we make our full circles when we sew it on. If you find that it's too bulky on the back, you can trim out some of the uh, background and layers of the different pieces, but I just don't think it's necessary. I just thought the nice block looked beautiful just as it was. Thank you. Have fun.